All righty, traders. This is uh, Blake Morrow, and you are listening to the Morning Edge. Did I just say the Morning Edge? Oh, I did say the Morning Edge. You guys know we're bringing back the Morning Edge, right? That's what this is all going to be. If you guys are just tuning in and you you kind of been missing that, you know, maybe last week. Um, you know, I, I I spend the reason why I used to call it the Morning Edge is just um, my old show is just to give you guys, you know, a trading edge on, on what's happening and give you some of my thoughts of like, you know, not only just the, the bias chart or the T chart that we used to do, um, but also like what really is, you know, going through my mind as far as what's eating away at me and what's eating Gilbert grape. Um, right now it, it's Bitcoin and Bitcoin is getting absolutely destroyed right now. We, we actually just slipped through 50,000. Just now, look at this. And I think you've got to be really careful here. You, if you own stocks, you've got to be careful, right? Um, the stock market's holding up as of right now. I mean, everybody's waiting for the open, but look, Bitcoin just went sliding through this trend line. Wow. Hold on really quick. I mean, that's, uh, wow. It just slid through 47,000. Holy cow. You, uh, how can you be long stocks right now when this happens? I'm going to have to sell some, I have to sell some Dow here. Sorry guys. I gotta, I gotta do it. I mean, <laughs> um, you know, why, what, you know, how can you, how can you not when you have this slide and, you know, well, I don't know. I don't know. I shouldn't get too carried away here. I, I'm I forget that I I was gonna I was gonna place a trade and then I just I'm gonna hold off for a second. But man, the uh, that that's a pretty big sell off. So um, you know, Chi was just in the chat room asking where I should be buying Bitcoin. It's got to be down here at forty two thousand. I mean, it's got to be if if you if you take this low, you know that previous trend line low here. Let's go do this, and then you go to the high. So the 50% retracement comes in at 43, 380. So maybe that's the place, right? I'll write that down as support today. Um, 43, 380. Okay. And then uh, obviously now, now anybody who's, you know, owns Bitcoin. Anybody who owns Bitcoin is like, okay, you know, I, uh, oh, wow, stocks just got <laughs> slammed. I guess I should have just, I should have actually sold some there. Um, um, I, I, but I think anybody who owns Bitcoin now is going to be really happy if we get back to 50, 54,000, right? These spike lows. So let's write that down. Um, or it's 53.8. It's still bullish for now, but uh, that's um, it's getting a little getting a little dicey for bulls, right? Like if you're if you're a bull, you've got to be thinking, okay, you know, I got to be a little scary. Uh, Yellen just said financial transaction tax worth looking at. That wouldn't be good for equities. No wonder equities just fell off, fell a little bit here. Yeah, um, that's uh, right here. <laughs> uh, market for a 100-year bond would probably be very tiny, but treasuries moving to long-term debt. <laughs> Could you imagine? I'm going to buy debt that expires... Probably by any time anybody's buying debt, it it it, it, it matures like like you know fifty years after my life, I'll be dead. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I mean, like seriously, Stelius, how crazy is that? 
Is that just nuts? Yeah. That's silly. Okay. Anyway, um, okay. I guess we should get back to the analysis, but um, but uh, man, Bitcoin, nice slide, huh? Well, it's been very volatile, right? It's been up and up with no um, uh, with no uh, pullback, and I think we're we're overdue one. Uh, Volatility, man, too volatile for my taste. Uh, sorry, sorry. I was just actually um, retweeting something from Joe. Uh, is the rip, ripsters on? on uh, you know, he he uh, he's actually friends with uh, Kevin Ferry, um, who you know is my friend that used to be on CNBC all the time and uh, runs a, the winery out in Napa. Anyway, um, uh, we he was he was tweeting something. I mean, I'm I'm sorry. I I missed exactly what you were saying there, but. I know the volatility has been high, but what's more important, I think, Stelios, is that, and and it's interesting, Katie Stockton today on Dale's webinar also mentioned the exact same thing. I mean, these are, you know, this is where you have to start really paying attention to how this is going to influence what we're doing in, in, in all the markets, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is an interdependence and the, the more, the bigger Bitcoin becomes in terms of, market cap, the more attention people look, uh, give, sorry, to, uh, and weight they give to its movement. So yeah, it's, it is a little bit scary today. And, and you, you definitely have institutional money behind it. It's not just mom and pop anymore. Yeah, absolutely. So, so now you've got, you know, a lot of funds and a lot of endowment funds that are long Bitcoin and what happens if it implodes? I mean, I'm just asking. You know, well, what happens here? I mean, what happens to what's the knock on effect? I think it's a little scary, but, um, you know, it's, I have to remind myself same thing I said yesterday. And those of you that are buying Bitcoin can think about this too, right now, if you're picking it up right now, nothing major, I can't imagine nothing major happening between now and tomorrow. Like you're not going to see equities fall 5% today. I don't think not, not ahead of Powell's testimony tomorrow. You're probably not going to see Bitcoin shave off another 20% of value of value today. So if you're out there buying Bitcoin today, I don't think that's a bad idea, right? It, it's it, the, the a, a drive to a, a reversal is probably if, if we're going to get one is going to come because of something that Powell said tomorrow. Yeah, and it's like like you said before, it's more than likely that uh, Paul is not going to change his tune. Why should he say anything else other than very be the very dovish? I yeah. I, I just and, don't see what's going to drive that. And we got yields actually coming down today. Um, you know, they're 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 coming off their highs. So um, so and you can see the thirty year as well. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just not, I think if you're out there picking up Bitcoin on this dip, I don't think that's a bad idea. If you're, um, you know, not shorting stocks today, I think that's smart. Um, you know, somebody had asked, or uh, I think Steph asked in the chat room, she's like, <clears throat> why is the dollar so weak right now? Or what happened to the dollar? We had a, we had a push higher, um, spike up. Sorry, it wasn't just in the euro. It was, um, you know, the, the sterling, the Aussie, Kiwi. You can see it. Everything kind of pushed higher. Um, and I'm like, because we're on pretty big support in 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 the S and P. Like, no one wants to be long dollars while the S and P is not breaking down. I mean, and and you know, so I think that's probably you know just some people squaring up positions. Um, that, that doesn't mean they're right. I just think that that's what's happening at the moment. So, you know what I'm going to do, uh, Stelius? I'm going to get through this analysis. Uh, Steve, guys, just so you know, he's not going to be here today. He'll be back in tomorrow. Um, but wanted to let you guys know that. So uh, uh, I'm going to, if you have any questions, make sure um, that you uh, that you bring up some, um, you know, uh, you bring them up. So after I'm done with the analysis, Stelius and I can, uh, can, can, um, uh, address any of your questions that you might have. All right. So big resistance right now for the Euro dollar. I, I think this is an inverted head and shoulder pattern for what it's worth. Um, and, and it really a breakout above 121.70 would be a probably big, 
big thing today. So 121.70. Um, now support. It's going to be right here at 120.90. I'm going to keep um, it on the bias chart on um, neutral or range for now. Now, the sterling bullish just continues to press higher. Now, you know, resistance is this 127% extension. If you don't know where that number is derived from, that is this long term. This is why it's so important. This is the pre COVID, post COVID spike down 127% extension is right here at 141. So, does does this mean you should be shorting the you know cable as you approach 141? No, but 141 is going to be big resistance. So if you're long, you need to be a little careful here, right? A little careful. I do I do still think that the uh, the the pound is bullish, and if you want to play the sterling long, play it against other currencies, like you know um, you know. Sh- sh- Play the pound Aussie long or something like that, you know, Euro sterling short. All right. Anyway, um, currently, this is key. And yeah, let me change that color. One thirty nine fifty. Um, Aussie. Okay. So here's the Aussie. It's in breakout territory. Broke out on Friday. What's up? Oh, I thought Stelia said something. Never mind. Um, broke out on Friday. Oh, I didn't I mean, say anything. Sorry, Mike. No, no problem. Uh, 7820, huge support. And I have to write while well, we are above this support level. You have to be bullish. You just have to be. I'm not saying that it's going to go higher. I'm I'm actually more worried. I'm frankly, I'm more worried that we're going to get a false breakout because if you look at copper um, and what's happened today in copper, you know, coming off the highs, I, I, I think that we are at risk of a copper pullback. And if that happens, it's going to, um, it's going to bring back the Aussie from these levels, you know, it's going to bring us back below 70 cents. Then we're going to end up getting a false breakout, but that hasn't happened yet. And you can't assume that that's going to happen yet. And I'm sorry, I keep yawning and I'm not doing that on purpose. I, um, I, for some reason I got up, well, actually I know why I got up. <laughs> I was, when I was sleeping. I got up at like one 30 in the morning and, um, and I, you know, I, you know, I had, I had to get up and then I tried to go back to sleep and I was, I was struggling to get back to sleep until I got up this morning, like actually got myself out of bed. So I'm, I am a little tired at this moment. Okay. So that's my excuse and I'm sticking with it. 261% extension of this move comes in at 79.35. That's our next resistance level from where we're at. So We have to assume it's bullish while we're above 6820 or 7820. I just, I'm worried. Like I said, I'm worried more about this move here. If you missed it on the, 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 the um, face webinar, copper got to the 161% extension right today. And um, DSI was at uh, DSI. Let me remove this. DSI, DSI was at 93 on Friday. We got it Friday afternoon, so um, yeah, that that is a uh, pretty scary because you don't see daily sentiment at that extreme, and and them them stay there for any period of time. You just don't. Very rare. Okay, so here's the kiwi. So the kiwi, we're right at the highs. We've already in Europe or in Asia rather, we actually stabbed a new highs up here, but we, we haven't been able to hold them. So I'm going to write down 73, 54, 127% extension, just above that. <clears throat> so 
we have to close above 7320 to be bullish for today. Support will be at 7270. Okay. We're not going to flip it to bullish yet, but we might flip it to bullish tomorrow, depending on where we close today. Okay. Dollar Canadian. You know, dollar Canadian hit a new trend low briefly, and then we bounced. So, uh, and, and notice that this is here, let me get rid of this. Well, actually I'll keep this. Ah, that's not what I want to do. Shoot. Uh, I want to grab that one. There we go. Stick that there. In the event we get a push, well, I guess this is 127% extension. Let me make sure of that. No, I didn't think it was. 127% extension would be here at 125.70. We're just going to call it 125.75. So that's support. Resistance on this move higher is going to be right here at 126.70. You can see 61 is the 618. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the previous 618. Forget that. That's just previous support. So we're going to write down 126.70 as being resistance today. All right. Um, and I, I'm, I, I'm not putting it on bearish because we're actually holding the lows. Matter of fact, you could actually argue that we made a false breakdown. So I'm, I'm, we need to close below this support, this blue line right here in order for me to flip bearish. I still think this is building a base dollar Swiss, um, big resistance. We tagged that today at 90 cents. Okay, this is a big multi-month trend line. Um, basically hit 90 cents and come off. And so right now, I would say we have to get above 90 and a quarter because that was just a short squeeze. That's all that was, right? So 90 and a quarter is now big resistance. And it's probably coming down because yields, I'm going to assume. Uh, support. So that's 618 off of the spike high. We'll be right near these spike lows. So that's basically 89.30 is support. And that's key. Okay. All right. Um, moving right along, US dollar Norwegian krona. Now, this is an inverted head and shoulder pattern. And let me uh, make that neckline just a little bit bigger here, okay? Uh, we are above the multi-month trend line. And that's with, the, that's with strong crude. So what happens if crude weakens? Or how about if we get some risk off? I mean, if we move above 855, I, wouldn't want, I would not want to be short US dollar Norwegian krona now. Um, seems like intraday support's going to be pretty strong back testing this trend line and these highs right here, you can, like all through here, this is all pretty good support. Right. All these little spike highs. It's just a support zone. Okay. So I'm going to take the lower end of that support zone coming at 845. It should hold 855. If we get above that, that's really bullish. So uh, 855, and I'm going to put an asterisk there. And I'm going to say 845 should be support this morning or today, rather. Blake, I think with the, with the corona, if people are long corona, so basically short dollar in Norway or short euro Norway, Yes. What scenario are you waiting for uh, that will actually make you money now? Because that's, that's what scared me and I got out. You know, yeah. you have oil higher, you have stocks. Okay, today, obviously, they're turning a bit lower, but they have been just going up and up and up. So what else do you need to happen for the corona to actually 
come alive and, uh, you know, dollar nowhere to go lower? That's a question. And I don't see what. <laughs> right. And, no, and, I, and, I, and I actually hear your argument. But, you know, a lot of people are banking on inflation and they think that crude oil is the super cycle in crude. We're going to see, you know, 70, $80 in a barrel crude. And I, I, I personally, I don't see it. Um, not, I mean, maybe, maybe based on production cuts or whatever, but really on, on organic demand. If that happens, Blake, I think we're going to see the mother of all selling in terms of uh, producer hedging if we get anywhere near 70, given the global uh, conditions at the moment in terms of demand, uh, if I was a producer, I'd be, I'd be hedging everything I can as far out as I can. And yeah. that would bring downward pressure. Right. That, I've, uh, I'd agree with that. Anyway, um, but th those are my thoughts. I have to actually say that this right here has got to scare the living daylights out of people. Let me get rid of this resistance zone. And so we can see why it's so important. Now that low there, Twenty eighty three, seventy seven. Low here, twenty eighty four. So, basically, twenty eighty four, we break above that, and we're there. I mean, we're there right now. That's pretty key, and I. I mean, you guys know, whoops, not the new one. I'm, I'm bullish um, after we broke through this trend line here, but now any, any dips back towards 20, 2060, people are gonna try buying it down there. They're, they're, they don't wanna be caught short this thing. You, you, you've seen, Stelios, what happens in a short squeeze in the dollar max? Oh yeah. I mean, it's this thing could, I mean, you know, when it squeezes, I mean, we could ramp up, you know, four or 5% really quick. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying that that can happen. So, you know, people are going to be a little, you know, hesitant on being on the short side of this one, especially if we start squeezing above this resistance or, um, you know, if we come back down towards support, I think you're going to get people trying to cover up some, some shorts. Uh, it is defied gravity for sure. Uh, let's go to the dollar yen. Um, And by the way, what's Bitcoin doing right now? I haven't even, I'm not even looking. Holy cow. What a it's bounce. Re it's recovered a bit. Yeah. 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 So you, then you should be looking at, if you're, if you're long, you should probably be looking to sell it here in the next, uh, you know, 2000 points. Or if you really think it's going to hundred K, put your stops at break even and hold on for dear life. Hodel, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh and I will say good luck with that. Dollar yen. Okay. So the dollar yen really is under pressure. I'm surprised the dollar yen is so pressured right now. Um, so the 618 retracement comes in at 105.10. That's probably going to offer some support today. Okay. Um, God, look at the recovery in Bitcoin is bringing a recovery in stocks. It's so crazy. Um, resistance is going to be 105.85. And guys, I, I have to reiterate, don't get too crazy ahead of pal tomorrow. Just don't get, it's going to be probably pretty. I mean, I think the market's really going to be waiting for that. Uh, notice we're back at the 618 in um, the dollar index. Remember how big this, remember this is the 618 of this move here that comes in at these lows, which is 9010. Um, I'm actually going to write down 90 as being support, but you can see why it's so important.
in the event the dollar rallies, which the dollar is struggling to rally. And, and you, you have to understand why. The dollar is struggling to rally because stocks are on support. So you don't want to be long the dollar as stocks, if, especially if stocks bounce from support. Yields are coming down a little bit. Uh, we even have um, precious metals that are bouncing today. So it's like, okay, I don't really want to be long the dollar at this moment. So you're getting anybody that's long the dollar probably a little, you know, they're just trying to take it off. Um, resistance 90.60 is going to be resistance intraday, then 91. So I'm going to write both of those down. Because I think if we can get above 90.60, then that does open the door for, you know, whoops, that opens the door for 91. So you got to kind of write put down both numbers. Uh, let's talk about gold because gold is bouncing today and both gold and silver are bouncing. So gold had a little false breakdown before below these lows on Friday. We are bouncing. So let's figure out where that bounce might. Uh, let's see, we can take, there we go. So the 38% retracement of this down move here comes in at 1836, which is also coincides with all that previous support that was there before. So uh, 1836, I'm going to write that down. That should be a resistance. I'm going to keep us in range. Support intraday, I mean, this is a four hour chart. So I think, um, you know, support intraday might be right back down at this level, right? It's been pretty important. Um, and Stelios, as I'm wrapping this up, uh, can, do you mind taking a look at some of these questions that are coming in? Yeah, sure. Okay, good. I'm, I'm going to be wrapping this up here in one second. Uh, silver, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you guys remember this from, was it Thursday or Friday? It was, I think it was Thursday night in Asia, the push to 26. Now we're back at 28. So, I mean, that's, I'm going to, I'm just going to write this and then you guys can deal with it. 26, 28. Oops. And if you're trading in between there, good luck. Cause it's just a big, hot, nasty mess. Okay. Uh, S and P last but not least, uh, you guys know S and P is definitely not least because it is, you know, between Bitcoin and S and P, I think they both are running the gamut on what we do with the rest of the markets at this moment. So, uh, we did spike below the support in European trade. So I'm going to actually write down that number. 3865. We have to close below 3865 in order for us to turn bearish near term. Right now, I mean, we might bounce back to intraday, uh, maybe back to, I'm going to, I'm going to give it all the way back up to, you know, well, 3904. And then I'm going to write down 39.35. So I'm doing both because 39.30, oh, 39.04, 39.35. I'm writing down both because, look, it's pal speaking tomorrow. And like Stelios believes, I believe, Dale believes, the whole market believes, we're going to get a dovish J Powell. So I mean, you're going to get everybody trying to say, well, well, screw it. He's going to be dovish. So let's just buy stocks. And they're just going to try to get long. They, they could just try to get long today and, and take us up towards resistance. So again, I'm just writing down those numbers. So we, we have them. Okay. So the bias chart's done, Stelios. I've already and, posted it. Uh, Question-wise, okay. we have a couple of comments about uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, but really not no questions. So. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and cover those. What? So uh, we should probably take a look at Ethereum first. Yes. Um, Ethereum. Wow. Wow. I didn't even see that. Holy Moses. Wow. That was a... Uh, if you were long Ethereum and you got stopped out in that, oh, that sucks. That sucks. All right. So anyway... Yeah. 
Um, that means that this is key. And by the way, I'm looking at a daily chart at Ethereum. That's basically where the 50 day moving average just above it. That's a 48 exponential moving average, but the 50 DMA comes in basically at 1475. So while we're above 1475, I'd probably be, you know, bullish Ethereum, not bearish. Okay. All right. But anyway, okay. So what do we got? Um, we don't really have any questions. Uh, oh, so we just take we a have... look at that. All right. So um, I, I see a couple of um, comments that. Uh, oh, nat know. natural gas somebody's asking for, but really, you know, that right, is the same. Was a 25%, that was a 25% <laughs> pullback from the highs. We were in a bear market for mm, 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Man, that's that's like a new record. That's a new record, I, I would say. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, natural gas. Let's take a look at natural gas. Now that we've passed, um, oh, whoops. Now we passed. Brock on. is saying Ethereum apparently did sixty-five percent on Kraken, which is crazy, right? How, you know, twenty-five percent on one, thirty percent on the other, sixty-five percent. I, I, it's just beyond me. I can't. I can't touch that stuff. That's nuts. Um, net net gas coming off a little bit. Uh, I, you know, one thing I want to, I, I should say about net natural gas is, um, you know, with with the warm or cold weather subsiding a little bit, you know, that's probably put a little bit of downside pressure on natural gas. So, you know, I think as long as we stay below three. Um, you know, the, the risk may be a move back down towards the 270 level. That's how I would approach it. Um, if I, if I was trading it, which I'm not, uh, copper, I need to pull this up back up again, you know, just keep an eye on copper guys, because if copper trades at today's lows or closes at today's lows, that is going to be one gnarly reversal candle at a key Fibonacci extension. That means that if you own Aussie dollars in any way, shape or form, you need to rethink that. I, I'm just pointing that out regarding copper. Okay. It's been a massive move. I mean, this, look at, look at this move, Stelio, since the COVID lows, copper has been up over a hundred percent, hundred, hundred and basically a hundred and wow. 12, 115%. I mean, even if you look at pre-COVID, you know, forget about the spike down. Pre-COVID, we're still up, you know, 60% or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and so, you know, is inflation coming? You know, I, I mean, the market se seems to think so. The Fed doesn't seem to think so. Yeah. I mean, and, and who's wrong? I mean, my money would probably at this point in time, my money would be on the, the market. But how many times is the market expected inflation to rise over the last several years. And we've gotten zilch, zilch. I mean, you know, we've gotten some inflation, but as from the way they measure. Uh, I'll right? tell you what, Blake, we're looking to do some improvements in our house. And uh, one part is we want to basically make a big metal construction. Anyway, it's, it's a long story, but we got a quote about nine months ago, 10 months ago about uh, uh, on, on a piece of work that we want to get done. And we got another quote this month and the price is about 30% higher. And then we're like, why is that? And they go, materials are a lot higher. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, I've heard similar stories because um, here where I live, we can't find workers. And so it's, it, we, we can't find workers and we can't find materials. So uh, you know, not only is labor costs are high because you're trying to attract laborers to do the work where we live, but, on top of that, then you got high cost. So maybe, maybe, maybe this is it, you know, the market's right this time, but if it is, you know, ha have we priced in a lot of it already? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. So, but I, I'm, I'm just, I want to point this out once again, that reversal in copper, if we close on the lows today, so I'm going to actually put an alarm here just to, 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 to track it. Um, you know, that means if we close on the lows, which is around four Oh seven, roughly, maybe a little bit lower. 
I'm going to second guess any Aussie positions out there. So, and I might actually just uh, outright short the Aussie dollar. So, all right, guys. Well, um, hey, I, I want to, uh, uh, Steve will be back tomorrow. I want to thank you all for being with us today. There's your bias chart. Um, it will be uploaded to your Forex analytics platform. So you, uh, you guys that are, you know. Um, it's already there. It's already there. Yeah, it's it's there. That's the great news about having it there um, now. But, uh, but I hope you all have a great one. I'll see you during the daily roundup uh, in a few hours. So. Thank you, Blake, and thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Stelios. Thanks, everybody. You guys have a great one. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.